How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Fordham Firesides. I'm your host, Hank Michaels. And today I have a guest all the way from London. He is the assistant head and director of student affairs at the Fordham London program, Matt Holland. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for coming on, Matt. Thank you You're for uh, like making this work. I know we texted back and forth and we kind of... It was, we had to make it work. You have a brief window to do this, but I'm so glad you came on. Well, I'm, I'm over at the minute um, spending time with the students who are coming in in January. We have 344 students currently set okay. to join us. So our previous high in, in your semester was uh, 221. Really? That was the first time over 200. So this is a lot. had a busy week. Yeah, had a busy week. Yeah. yeah. Is that, do you come over um, before every group? Uh, it, that's become more recent. Okay. Yeah. I th- that was really based on uh, on some student feedback that they would like there to be a, a London presence and a London voice and a bit like a circus act. I'm kind of wheeled out <laughs> with my accent to prove that, yes, you know, it does exist. Yeah, and, but yeah. here's a Brit. Kind yeah, of, exactly. Yeah. I think when I uh, did my information session in the fall, it was just, I think, like American representatives from the mm-hmm. abroad office. But yeah, it's cool that you came to kind of like give everyone like a feel of, I guess, what the accent's going to be like. <laughs> And the, the, the American, the, the study abroad office do a great job, but I can perhaps answer a little bit more on, okay, this housing, you have a supermarket two minutes this way, you've got, this is your nearest tube. Mm-hmm. And that's the only, that type of experience is what I, what only I can bring because I, you know, live there. Yeah, so exactly. it is an advantage to have us in the room. So uh, describe to me like what your exact role is at the Fordham London program. So for those not familiar familiar with the, the London Centre, uh, so we, we run three programmes out of there. Um, numbers can vary semester to semester, and it's a, it's a relatively small team. I think it's a, it's a great team. I really enjoy my work. Um, and what's, what's great about what I do is it's so varied. It's really from the, uh, from the, the small um, minutiae of, of what's going on behind the scenes. It can include some... some menial tasks it can also just be things on social media sure um up to um the more serious side of things because although it's study abroad it's not holiday abroad so someone has to to uh do conduct if someone's misbehaved so that that often falls on my shoulders um and then a big part of a big part of my job really will be um housing um health and well-being and then making sure that there's a there's a good kind of a social calendar and activities and opportunities. Okay. So week to week, it, it differs. You know, one week we're focusing on, you know, what are we doing with housing for next semester? The next week we're we're meeting with partners for, okay, you're going to run this weekend trip for us and how much is it going to cost, etc. And so my job is to, to really make sure that outside of the classroom, so we have an academic affairs office, but everything outside of the classroom is not only ready for when students arrive, but every semester we're just trying to improve and, and grow that program. And I, I'd, yeah. I'd like to think that that we keep making small little additions which are building into that um, bigger picture. So you're like the liaison of the student body, essentially? Uh, in, in some ways, um, it's, it's, it's not necessarily... Uh, well, it, it's certainly not a student rep kind of position because... Uh, a lot of what I do is is for the centre, is for, um, for example, you know, the housing providers. I'll spend a lot of time behind the scenes, meeting with the housing providers, making sure that we're that we're ready, that the housing is is up to standard. Um, and then when students arrive, what I like about the London Centre and the programmes we have there, I think, by by the nature of being a small group, we get to know you. We we get to spend time with you. There are trips. There are weekends away, um, and we we will try to to learn your name. We will try to yeah. to get to know you as as people. But there still has to be that that barrier. So it's um it's something which which I think is an is a great advantage of of study abroad that not only um will you be able to to be independent, but you'll be treated as someone that is being independent. Sure, sure, yeah, no, that's really cool. So um, with housing, I know a lot of those, the places that students live in off campus, they're not like Fordham, it's not Fordham housing, essentially. It's, they go through, I guess, like real estate broker to find these apartment buildings. So we work with um, this coming semester, two providers. There's, there's a number of um, 
accommodation, private accommodation providers for students in London. We work with study abroad specialists in that. Um, they provide not only the housing, but the maintenance, the uh, cleaning, etc., and everything that, that goes on behind that. And so it's their responsibility to find buildings, to work with landlords, and then we essentially are their client on behalf of the okay. on behalf of the students. Um, and so it's my job really to um, to to when they have something to show us, hey, there's this new building, I go along and then approve it on behalf of Fordham that yes or no, we will have students that live here. So I lived in uh, Sutherland uh, in the spring when I was abroad, and that was almost like a brownstone in like a, on a street with like a bunch of like families living there. But inside Sutherland was like a bunch of small apartment buildings and it almost felt like it was made specifically for students living abroad, is that the case? So Sutherland, as one example, actually was in private accommodation, was, was out for, for private tenants about three months before you moved in so actually um, it wasn't designed necessarily for students but it was um, designed in terms of that layout for flats or apartment style okay setups so that that can be quite common and that's something that you see in um, in the providers that we work with we go for apartment style lets I think that is part of the package gives you um, something as I mentioned earlier that sense of independence you have to cook for yourself but you also have your own um, your own lounge with or, or living room with sofas and a TV and and you you live there as a group you live in a community you live in a neighborhood you have to find your local pub you have to find your local shops yeah exactly <laughs> whereas if you were in a hall of residence style yeah. which other programs like that exist in London where you live in a hall of residence um, you maybe just have your one small room where you have a bunk bed and two of you are in there and a little desk and, a, and maybe there's a little ensuite but space is very limited you might have I don't know say 12 different rooms on a floor with maybe a kitchen on the end maybe it's catered I don't think it'd be the same experience and at least in my two years there and, and feedback that that predates that is that how we set it up in giving you a place to live and a place to call home I think it helps particularly when you're moving to a new country yeah that you're going to be in a flat that you're sharing with other people um, usually it's it's kind of four five or six in a flat uh, some come over as a group of friends and I think that just set up works yeah a yeah. lot better and also you're just kind of like planted in a community so you can get more of an authentic experience yeah. um, so when I was there the the campus was in Kensington at Heathrop College which no longer exists like they tore it down right this summer So they were going to tear it down but essentially it doesn't okay. exist yeah But now the the campus is a, a new like shiny new place like Yeah so so if you're watching this and you're a, you're an alumnus I'm very sorry yeah. um, it's it's really nice now <laughs> But uh, if you're like a sophomore or freshman like that you have a great place to go to now Yeah So we're really proud of of um, what what is our new home i think uh, a shout out should go to to father richie so father richard salmi is the, the head of the london center um and this really was his his big project for for past about two and a half years kind of predating my time um and and he found somewhere and then worked with people on the ground people here in new york and and so and by a miracle but by his hard work we we moved in over the summer um, we moved in July 31st. We had students come on August the 29th, and we were ready to go. Um, it's a much bigger sp space. It's a it's a more of a statement piece now. Yeah. I think Fordham London, well, Fordham inherited a London program almost by accident. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure in the exact year, but I, I think it was early 2000s when it um, took over uh, Marymount College. Okay. And the drama program existed, and so they inherited this London program. And then I think over time, I, I mean, I wasn't there, but they looked at that and gone, okay, what do we do now that we have a, a foothold in, in London? They added some business and, and liberal arts courses initially in the summer, then in one semester. I, I still remember about three years ago, I was working at Heathrock College. So that's how I got to know Fordham London. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, I remember the staff that hit 100 students for the semester and they were so excited. They were <laughs> celebrating. It was a milestone. Um, and in your semester, a couple of years later, we have 220. In January, we have 340. So the, 
the growth has been rapid and so the move to the new building everything has just worked out well for Fordham it's a shame what's happened to Heathrop but Fordham was ready to stand up to step out and become kind of this center of 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 excellence really I think it's I think everything that's happened in the last few years the academic standing the offerings in in the social output that we do and I think have really come on leaps and bounds and now you have a real center yeah and it, it's Fordham's own center now it's not like partnered with another college yeah when we're, we're not leasing space at the back end of Heathrop because yeah, like yeah. we <laughs> if you went to Heathrop you'd never know we were there yeah you, you couldn't really see a sign yeah there's no Ford besides like the offices mm -hmm. um so tell me about how you got involved with Fordham. You mentioned you were working at Heathrop, but how did that come about to being a Fordham employee? So this was when um, Fordham was, was still on the Heathrop site. I spent two and a half years in the Students' Union. I first worked um, as, I was there as vice president. I was, I was elected, that was a, a position, and that's quite common that um, you will have a sabbatical year where you're employed by the Students' Union. So I did, okay. I did that for, for a year, then I, um, moved on and I, I eventually became the, the manager of the Students' Union. I did that for almost a year and a half, um, running the small team there. But it, it came to, to, to be that, that uh, Heathrop was struggling financially, yeah. which was a, a shame. Um, you know, being the only Jesuit uh, university in, in the UK and um, the only college there that offers, that specialised in philosophy and theology. Um, and a position came up at Fordham so I knew Fordham staff because we had done some events together sure, and sure. worked together on projects, etc. And it's probably the only time so far in, in kind of my life that I've made a really selfish decision yeah. um, as, as kind of an adult that um, I, I, I love and loved Heathrop. It was a great place. It was where I, I did my undergraduate there. I did my master's okay. there. I worked there for a number of years. I'm still on, the, on their governing body now. Um, which I've got, I think, the last governing body meeting ever of Heathrop is next week. So that's kind of a closing of that chapter for me. Um, but I, I saw the position at, at Fordham. It was doing a lot of similar things to, to what I was doing, um, some differences. Yeah, just more tailored towards a broad students. So. Broad students and, and the, American, the American student affairs style, which it's probably took me up to a year to really grasp and now that I understand it um, I, I, I actually think that the UK universities should take a leaf out of the American universities book I as a British student there are some things that I enjoyed more I think I enjoyed more than I would if I was um, having the same experience in the US but the fact that for, that everything outside of the classroom is one under one umbrella yeah, yeah. seems like that just makes common sense to, yeah, yeah. that housing and, and health and, and counselling and all those things kind of are connected because yeah, of they course. are yeah. but in a, in a UK university you'll have counselling under the director of administration you'll have housing under the director of estates um, all of the events are run by the students union So and, and the students union may have its own counselling services that are separate from universities so it can be very confusing yeah. for a student um, at, at a British university, to, to when they they need help or they or they need some support to navigate that that landscape. So yeah, I yeah. think it's a lot more straightforward at times. Um, yeah, yeah, I can see it. Um, but why don't you tell me about yourself? Are you from London originally? So I'm not from London. Um, I've been in London eight years. Okay. And I originally am, I'm from uh, Kent in in the southeast. So that's the uh, okay. the. the so if, if you think, if you, okay, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. <laughs> if you think of uh, Dover, yes. so the White Cliffs of Dover, Canterbury is probably the only other kind of notable, okay. so uh, Geoffrey Chaucer, Canterbury tale, okay. Tales. Okay. Um, so I'm from that county, which is the southeast corner, um, but I'm about an hour out of London. Okay. I've been to Weymouth. That's the only place in South England I've been to. Weymouth, I think, what county is Weymouth? Uh, it's like sent more like the center. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of past because you love Portsmouth or Southampton. I think Weymouth is like a little bit further yeah. around. They yeah. film stuff from Dunkirk there. That's oh, like okay. A, is that yeah. Why you're okay. <laughs> no, I actually went because my brother was sailing there, but it just like coincidentally like they filmed Dunkirk there, and that was like the week it came out. So I was yeah. pretty pretty excited about that. Are you a bit of a history? Uh, more of a movie guy, but if a movie is about history and I really like it, then I would yeah. like I become more interested in the oh. history around it. 
I haven't watched it yet. Oh, it's great. It's a great movie. Is it Harry Styles? Is it? Yeah, Harry it? Styles plays like a kind of small role in it, but he's good in it. Um, oh, is he? Yeah, okay. there's not a lot of talking, so it's not like there's like a lot of like great characters in the movie, but mm. he's good in it. It's a Christopher Nolan movie, and that guy's amazing. Yeah. Well, Inception, the Batman, well... Exactly, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then as soon as, you know, he steps away from Batman, you know, all the following films out of that front, you know, the, the more recent stuff, the oh, Batman yeah. versus Superman. That, and, yeah, uh, he had nothing to do with that, and it was trash. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Dark Knight movies, next yeah, level. Absolutely. And Inception, one of my favorite movies of yeah. all time. Like, yeah, can't beat cool. it. Um, so, when you moved to London, you said you've been there eight years now, so you clearly know it better than probably every student that's visiting there. So what are, what are your biggest recommendations besides like, you know, the touristy stuff? Like what's something people should do that they might not know about? I think I'll go back to your first point and then I'll give you an answer. I think okay. what's a great thing about London compared to, compared to New York and, and if I'm honest, I don't really like New York that much. That's fair. It's not for no, everyone. No, I, but but I, I do love London. I'm very biased. And, <laughs> but it is so vast. And so London has 32 different boroughs. And, and, and every borough that you move through has its own identity. Okay. Um, and then it will have its own. So you could be over in the West in Chiswick where it's lots of greenery and, and lots of wealthy young families. Mm-hmm. And, and, or you could go over to the East. And um, I've got friends over to kind of like past Stratford in, in like East Ham and um, Leighton and Leightonstone and it's a lot more industrial and a bit rougher and okay yeah so so that's so it's very that's very very uh, different I've always been in the west so so I've I've lived in Shepherd's Bush Fulham Ealing and Kensington um, are the main areas that okay that, that I've lived in is that where you lived when you worked at Heathrow in Kensington so I lived, uh, so my Kensington is when I was an undergrad. I lived in Kensington for one year. Okay. And then I lived in Shepherd's Bush for a couple of years. So I've always, I've, I've always known and uh, my way around West London a lot better. Yeah. So my favorite, so my favorite spot, if you're, if you're going over to London, um, if the weather's nice, head down to, to Hammersmith Bridge. There's this great little, little pub um, that has a, a river. It's called their Riverside uh, Room. And you can go up to the top there. They have these huge bay windows, and sometimes they open them up in the summer. And you could have, you know, that's a really nice place just to eat. Okay. I've, I've been on my own there before, and just have have a pint and and have a meal, and yeah, just sit yeah. there and just watch people row up and down the Thames. It's that's that's a great place to uh, to go and be. Um, Hampstead Heath, uh, if a student's going over, is is a uh, a great spot to to go up to in um, in North London. It's kind of further above Regent's Park and. It's free to go in. There, are, there'll be dogs everywhere, and if you go up to Parliament Hill, you have this amazing view, just because of the height of, of where you are on that piece of land, and then Parliament Hill itself takes you further up. You can just see the entire city skyline, oh, really? completely free. Huh. So not going to cost you a penny. Um, so that's that's great. Uh, a bit more central, you, you'd have to try Borough Market. Yeah, great place. Great food. Yeah, there. it's so Such good. Such good food. Um, did you ever go to Camden Market? I did not. I just went to Borough Market. Uh, yeah, I missed Cam- that. Oh, wait, Cam- no, I might have. There's a Shake Shack there, right? Uh, Am I thinking of the right place? I'm not sure. Isn't that like, is that a chain? Yeah, it's a chain, but like that, that's just like what yeah. I, that's like the one like named place I remember there because okay. there it's a chain. So, so Camden, you would have gone to Camden Lock. So like the market is next to the lock. Maybe. To where the canal is. Maybe not then. No. I might be thinking of something else. So those those are pretty cool places. I mean, Shoreditch is always uh, somewhere worth visiting if you're coming over to London. Um, Box Park is just a really interesting concept where it was meant to be a, a temporary set of shops that were built into um, shipping containers, and then it's just become a permanent. Um, it's not an ex- it's not an exhibit because it now it, it operates. There's a, like a cafe bar on the top, so every shop is the same size dimensions because it's just in these old shipping containers yeah. that are painted black. So, I mean, that's, that's short it's for you. It's just coffee shop upon coffee shop. Sure. It's just your hipster kind of East London yeah, place to yeah. go. No, that's cool. Yeah, it's making me miss it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so before we go, what would be like your 10 second pitch to students who are on the fence about going abroad Ooh. to London? Oh, uh, you caught me unaware. Okay. <laughs> I think... Well, can I have longer than 10 seconds? Probably yeah, not, yeah. Not go Say what you long. need to. Okay. So so firstly, I think if, if, you, if someone actually is on this, I'm going to use this as a little bit of a marketing tool, um, that 
firstly, Fordham makes it very easy. I hope you you'd agree yeah. to to study abroad oh, at the yeah. London Centre. You can you, your your tuition is the same. You can take your grants and scholarships with you. Um, the courses will tie in with um, your requirements over over here in the US, so yeah. you can make sure that you. So all of that's great. So everything is made easy for you. So why would you why would you go to London? Uh, if you haven't travelled to Europe, I, I would actually say not just London, but travelling to Europe, I think, um, really will open your mind uh, to, to the world out there. I think it's, 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 take Rome as a different example. You could, you could be in, in Rome and everywhere you turn. Yeah, I loved it, Rome. It, it just, was so good. Everywhere you turn, there's just something amazing to see that, that just fascinates you with how did they build this so many years ago? How, just the, the complexity and the beauty yeah. of that and, and I think and London is is a great kind of um, almost like a juxtaposition between the old and the new because it sure. has the financial district the Shard all these new buildings going up the Leaden Hall the Walkie Talkie etc all these and it's and it's a huge financial capital of Europe and, yeah. and, and, a, and a big global city but you still have these fantastic sites to go and see yeah there's a lot going on it's and, hard and to get bored. Some of them you know of, so, you know, you everyone will go and see Buckingham Palace, but would you go and see Sion House out in in West London? You probably wouldn't have gone out to see that, but that, but spread throughout London, you have Chiswick House. Um, you could go to Somerset House right by um, the London Eye. All these great places to go and see, and some of them they've built museums inside them, art exhibitions, cafes. That the whole city. Um, has something for everyone and that's what i think is great i think for me uh the great thing about new york is the people i sure. think london is great in and, in and of itself okay yeah no that's that's good yeah especially with the uh being able to visit the rest of europe because i think maybe i didn't even that didn't cross my mind like when i was a freshman here like i like going abroad you spend so much time going to other countries i probably went on eight different trips and i saw everything but london is just a great place to kind of like make your home base because mm. it's nice it's welcoming and there's just so much to do so what was your favorite city that uh, you went to see besides london rome rome i, I love rome it like kind of blew my mind like i knew it was obviously a lot of history but i didn't realize that like everywhere you go there would be like crumbling columns from mm. ancient rome and like it was like hard not to see that yeah. stuff like it was it was awesome did you manage to get over to anywhere in eastern europe no, like I think Rome might have been as far. Or, oh, I went to Venice. That's as about okay. as far east as yeah, I went, yeah, yeah. Um, or Berlin. I don't know which one's okay. further east, but yeah. otherwise, I was mostly in Western Europe. Yeah, well, Western Europe is you know I guess you're in a, in a limited amount of time that you want to see those, those yeah. big sites. And, you know, yeah, yeah, all of them. Paris right. and Berlin and Lisbon and Rome. And yeah, Barcelona was really awesome. nice. It's great. Yeah, yeah. All right, Matthew, thank you so much for coming on. I'm so glad we got to no, squeeze this absolutely. in. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, hello, everyone. If anyone's an alumni, I miss you and hope to see you soon. Yeah, exactly. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your time here Lovely. in New York and a great flight back. Thanks, so. Hank. Thanks. Thanks very much. See you guys next time. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. You know the whole deal. Uh, I'll see you in a few days. Bye.